Hi and welcome to Jessie James Beads. My name is Jem. I'm broadcasting to you from the United Kingdom. I hope you're having a beautiful day today, no matter what it is you're doing. Now, I don't know about you, but I have completely fallen in love with the Let's Be Mermaids collections. Today, we're going to be working with the one that's no longer in the box, which is called Siren. There are one of three available. Now, I have borrowed some of the beads from this mix, a couple of little drop charms, and added them to my necklace. So I'll show you my necklace on the board a little bit later on as well. But everything else that comes in the Let's Be Mermaids box called Siren is down on the board now. I want to show you the beads first, and then we'll take a closer look at what we're going to make together today. Now, in a change from I normally bring you jewellery with wire, today I'm going to bring you a decorative item can be used inside or outside. I like to think of it as a sunlight catcher, wall art, garden decor, something you can hang in the yard. I don't know if you barbecue or you eat outside a lot, just something to prettify where you are. And this is such a beautiful collection to work with, both for jewellery, as I have done here, and for your decorative items. Let's take a look at those beads. Now, as you can see, you get an awful lot in this pack. Let's just have a quick look. Let's be mermaids in siren. There's an aqua colour one and a coral colour one as well. We already worked with the aqua one a couple of weeks ago. Now a couple of the beads that I'm going to use today are these beautiful ceramic beads. They're absolutely huge. Really, really beautiful aperture up the middle. And they'll be going directly onto the wire of our sunlight catcher piece that we'll work together today. You also get a couple of these magnificent purple large beads. It's almost like a faux pearl, that's the kind of idea. You get four of these sparkly mermaid tail, actual tails. They are gorgeous, really lovely colourway. I'm very much a purple person and not usually a pink person, but these in terms of their colour, sit at that perfect point between pink and purple, where they're purple enough for me to like them and pink enough for them to be really entrancing for everyone involved. We're also going to use a couple of those today. These are some of my favourite non-gemstone beads. You get four in the mix. We might or might not some use some of these today, but you have the most magnificent, it's almost like a rainbow moonstone glow in some of these. Can you see it there? absolutely amazing love these beads they're beautiful if i could buy just strands upon strands of those you do also get in a peacock tone four of these what are often referred to as stick pearls so you do get four of those not quite sure what i've done with the other one there it is you have got beautiful charms in terms of these gorgeous like clamshell just tip them up to the light a little bit they're really beautiful and beautiful quality as well get a couple of exquisite starfish i presume the plural of starfish is starfish unless it's different varieties and then it would be starfishes at least i'm led to believe so you get a pair of those as well so that's two pairs of earrings just in those metallic charms we might use one of those today as well you've got faceted rondelles in an ab coating we might use some of those to make some of our charm drops you've got some of my favorite shaped uh, they're almost like a rondelle but they've got like a spinning top faceting to them they're gorgeous as well as your classic rondelle and they're both in a purpley hue with an ab coating so you've got two different shapes on those gorgeous faceted crystals and in addition to the almost like moonstone but in purple you've got these slightly frosty looking beads again it's a bit of a peacock tone with an opaque coating over the top you get four of those as well back to those spinning tops and rondelles these are exquisite as well you get a pair of these beautiful metallic spacer beads with almost like a lilac rhinestone embedded perfect aperture if you wanted to use those on your charm bracelet systems they'll slip straight onto them i also love to use these on the back of the wrist in macrame designs because you only need one bead for that 
You also get two of these exquisite chubby drops in purple. What's my favourite colour in the world? It's purple. Four of these ovals. Whoop, can't even pick them up now. That's just my fingers today. A couple more of those spinning top facets there. You've got these gorgeous squishy, and I'm not sure if they're stretchy or not. Ever so slightly, but certainly malleable beaded circuits. I don't know what you would call them other than that. Let's pop those through. And then we have got an array of, are they true bicones? Yeah, bicones, I suppose, but drilled through like so. I think you get eight of those. And then we've got bead caps. Slightly larger, there's four of those. And we also have a couple of the smaller variety. Lovely, lovely. And then you have got rhinestone spaces, and it looks like you get six of those. As ever, Jesse James beads have brought the sparkle. So we've got loads of beads in the mix today. Let's just shake those last ones through. So lots to work with in your Let's Be Mermaids siren. Well, let's take a cheeky peek at what we're going to make. So I've designed this as a piece of decor for the wall, for your garden, for your yard, for hanging up in your pool room if you're lucky enough. Now, if you're going to be taking this outside, do consider that the weather will impact both your metal and your beads. So in terms of using the crystal or rhinestone encrusted spaces, they may be better reserved for indoor use, but pretty much everything else here will survive the great outdoors, albeit I've chosen to work with a raw copper, which is already started to darken slightly because I have those kinds of fingers. <laughs> Some of us uh, will darken metal more quickly than others. It's just a natural part of our genetic makeup. So I tend to darken wire after a couple of days of working with it. So what I would say is if you're going to put something like this outside in the weather, free to be rained on, and if you're, especially if you're near to the ocean, you get salt water on it, your copper wire will darken quite quickly. But also some of your other materials might, might not particularly want to be outside. So just when you're choosing which beads to work with, just be considerate on that front. So in terms of size, I've made mine to be quite large probably wouldn't want to wear it as jewellery but you absolutely can do if you want to. I've designed it as decor including those two lovely little mermaid tails up at the top there. So that's what we're going to make today. I just wanted to give you an idea of size. It can be quite difficult to judge when you're looking at it on a board. So let's head back down to the board and get cracking with the beginner friendly techniques for our Jesse James beads let's be mermaids and siren so we're going to use three different gauges of wire we're going to use one gauge of wire to create the main section in this really lovely swirling swooping form and that's going to be slightly heavier today I'm going to use 16 gauge wire for this section Next, we're going to use 18 gauge wire to create the elements that will drop down and away. So it's 18 gauge to create these. It's, it's strong enough to hold those in position, but not so strong that you're adding too much weight. And then we'll also be working with 20 gauge to make this lovely swirly, almost oceanic, a little bit like the wave tops, just a little extra to go over the surface to bring a little bit more texture to your sunlight catcher or wall decor. Now obviously you get so many beads to choose from that you can mix and match which beads you want to use. Well, let's just move some of these out of the way for a moment. I wonder if there's room enough for me to just pop that up in the top corner today. I should think so. So the first thing I want to do is bring the heaviest gauge wire into play. I'm working with raw copper, it's reasonably soft, it's nice and fluid, it's great to work with and I've cut 16 inches and that's 16 gauge wire to work this main frame section. 
As ever, the first thing I'm going to do is put some smoothness and warmth into that wire, just to make sure that it's a little more fluid to work with. Also, it helps to iron out any minor kinks that you might have from receiving that wire through the mail service. So that's just warmed it up a little bit. We've only gone three or four times between thumb and forefinger just to get that going. Now, my hanging loop up at the top, I decided to go for a very large central aperture and then three very tight together curls of wire so we've got a nice strong place to start. So I'm going to begin right down near the box joint on my round nose pliers. I'm going to just rotate that around until I get the first section. Now I just very loosely allow that wire to wrap around. Let's see if I can bring that down a bit so you can see it. Until it crosses the path of where it began. So I now have a circular form to begin with. I'm just going to squish that down to make sure that nothing is sticking up. And what I want to do now is bring the tail of the wire and I can add a little bit of warmth to it as we move round to circle around that first circular form. So for this, if you want it to be nice and neat and tidy, just slow down and go steady. You can rush through this and end up with something that's a little bit more oval, or you can just go nice and slowly, small movements. What you might notice is that I'm moving both of my hands in together in a manoeuvre like this. You will find that it alleviates some of the stress and wear on your wrists if you allow your wrists to share the load. Obviously, if you have one wrist which is really tricky and the other which is absolutely fine, just be careful for the one that's fine. You don't want to overload it. I know that that's something that I do. So we've got the beginnings of a place to hang our decorative item a little bit later on. And I've gone, as I said, for one, two and three turns around quite a large central aperture and that just means that I can get a good piece of ribbon or whatever hanging material I wanted to use. I think I've got some uh, jute gardener's twine which I found laying around the place but I think as the copper ages in my back garden that will look really lovely because the wire will darken and it will just look quite natural. So what we want to do now you can see that the wire is tending to continue in the same sort of circular form. Well I actually want that to flip around in the other direction now. So I'm just going to use my finger to just gently put a little bit of curvature in there, like so, and then I'm going to flip it over so you can see it in the same orientation as our finished piece. So I'm going to draw the wire around a little bit more. Now if you have a large round form it can be quite helpful to get this nice circular shape. We're not going to be making the coil just yet because we'll want to load our charms and beads on. But what you can do, as she says reaching over, is grab yourself a mandrel. Now I have in the other room a beautiful small beadle on mandrel which is just a circular bangle form. They are really, really handy to have because they're super light. At the moment I've got a great big long bangle mandrel which is about a foot and a half in length and weighs a ton. So what I'm going to do is just wrap the wire around the widest part to begin with. And if I just drop that back down to the board, let me flip it back over into the other orientation. You'll see that I've probably cut a little bit too much wire, so you probably only needed about 14 inches, but uh, I always prefer to have a little more wire than I need than too little, because it's very difficult to add wire on without the aid of a soldering iron. And we all know that that's something that I'm never going to do on air because I'll probably set fire to myself. I'm not great at soldering, I'm the first to admit it. Now, if you wanted to, you could take your hammer and block and put a little bit of hardening down this first arc. If you don't have a hammer and block, another way that you can harden this wire is by noisily opening and closing your flat facing pliers over the bit that you know you're happy with the shape of. What we don't want to do is add any hardening on the long tail just yet because we're going to want to add some of our charms and drops and beads onto that already. So there's a couple of techniques that we can learn to make things to go onto our design. The first thing that I'll show you is how to make just a little beaded drop extender with a charm at the bottom. So I'm going to pop this out of the way. I'm going to find my 18 gauge 
wire. This is always round. I'm working with quite a soft wire. If you work with German style wire, it will be exactly the same process. What you'll find is it's just one tiny bit harder to work with in terms of its strength, not hard in terms of difficulty. German style wire is perfect for this kind of technique. So I'm just going to cut around about three inches of wire to play with for now. That is more than we need, but it just makes it slightly easier for me to show you what I want to achieve. Now, because these charms are not grossly heavy, let's just pick, uh, why don't we go for the starfish this time? Now, because this, when you just try to wait, I can't pick it up, I've cut my nails and I, I can't feel anything anymore. <laughs> it's not terribly heavy. It's weighty in so much as it would be comfortable as an earring but it's not so heavy that it's going to distort the wire. So I'm going to show you an open and closable loop on both ends of this design. A bit later on I'll show you a wrapped loop again, although I feel like I've shown you that so many times you might be getting bored of it. So as I say this is about two and a half to three inches of that 18 gauge wire. I've removed it from the spool and I'm just straightening that up to get it nice and toasty warm. What I'm going to do to begin with is go for a reasonably large open and closable loop. So I'll go about halfway down my round nose pliers, rotate that around until the wire just crosses behind the beginning point. So if I just tilt that in the light, you should be able to see the tail of wire is just nudging past the start point. Then what I'm going to do is put my pliers inside that circular form and push the tail of the wire up so that you get, to all intents and purposes, an eye pin. You may need to just centralise that circular form. And then what I'm going to do is open and close my pliers over the top of that to get a good, strong shape. You're setting it when you're opening and closing. You're putting pressure down on the wire, which is making the copper achieve a sense of hardness. What this means is that when I now open the loop, and we're going to treat this like a jump ring, so if I put my fingers into this orientation, the temptation when you're new to jewellery making is to open a loop like so, or open a jump ring like so. If you do that, you will never get that beautiful round form back again. So the way that we do it is to open it slightly sideways. And I'll show you that now. So I'm going to grip the open half of that loop and just elevate the open end. So you get a nice access point. And I'm going to pop the charm on face down. And then I'm going to close that loop back up in exactly the same way. We're just moving half of that circular form. Once my charm is in position, and I like to have my charms on the front face so you don't actually see the cut. The cut is hidden behind the upright section of the wire. I'm just going to open and close my pliers a couple of times on that circular form once more. Then we can choose a bead. We don't have to recreate the exact theme as we have done here. So let's choose one of those slightly wider AB coated half purple rondelles. I think that will work quite nicely. So I'm just going to show you a couple of key techniques. This is basically the same as this, so I won't show it to you over and over again. I will show you just two of those and you can repeat as many or as few times as you desire. So once I've got as many or as few beads as I want on this particular piece, I'm going to bring a forwards bend up again. So making sure that my forwards bend matches the forwards bend at the bottom and being incredibly careful not to get too close to that crystal bead. So you can see that whole manoeuvre took place without my pliers coming into contact with the bead. I've seen a lot of people working with wire in classes and around the place and uh, the bead will simply shatter if you crack it with your pliers. We don't want you to get damaged and we don't want your beads to get damaged. So if you take that extra second and leave just the tiniest gap, you will stay safe and your beads will stay beautiful. So if you can remember approximately where we popped those pliers onto the wire before, I'm just going to rotate around. So I've got the first half of the loop up there. It looks slightly smaller than the loop at the bottom, but that's okay because it's going to go on to a 16 gauge wire. So it can be smaller 
unless you're looking for a sense of symmetry. So it's up to you. You can go for exactly the same size or you could go for a slightly smaller one. So I'm just going to wrap that wire around. You can see I've left a gap there. Push that down against the angle that we just created. And then very carefully, we're going to trim that away at the correct position. So if I just pop that in like so, buried my pliers under my cutters then, we just need to make sure that the cut end of the wire sits flush against the angle that we made. Now you can see there's a gap there and I've done that on purpose because I want to show you how to fix that. If you were to make jewellery with a loop like this, what could happen is when you thread that onto your design like so, if your jewellery or your, in this case, artwork joggles around, it can pop through the gap and you can lose a charm. Yes, it will take some joggling, but you know, sometimes these things happen. So what you can do is pop your round nose pliers back in and just take it a little further to the shallow end or the narrow end and just rotate them round a bit. Take it past the point at which it meets the angle and then very carefully just pull that back ever so slightly and you'll see that we've closed up that gap. When you're happy with the orientation of your wire and making sure that there's no gap so that things just can't simply get juggled out of position we're going to give that a couple of lovely squishes and squeezes to make sure that it stays good and strong so that's one technique for creating a charm i'm only going to show you one other technique because this and this and this follow the exact same process. So I'm just going to make a coil at the bottom, load on some random beads, and I'll show you very quickly a wrapped loop up at the top, but you can of course do an open loop, a simple loop as we've just done here. So I'll just pop that to one side for now. Let's see how much wire we've got left. There was about an inch left on the one that we've just made, and that was from a two and a half to three inch length. So that's not quite enough for what we want to do here. However, this length of wire is always useful for making little coils and tiny loops. In fact, I'll show you that now as a bit of a bonus. I hadn't planned to show you that today, but if you end up with just like an inch to an inch and a half of wire, you can make tiny coil charms, which you can add on to designs like this. They don't all have to be the same size. So exactly the same way as you would make any coil, we're going to continue until we've got, say, a quarter of an inch of wire left. When we get to that last quarter of an inch, we're going to pop the pliers in underneath and just straighten that on the end, which is how we're going to create this large drop charm and the smaller drop charm next to it in a second. But rather than loading a bunch of beads and finishing with a wrapped loop up at the top, I'm just going to bring the wire forwards at that angle that we've just changed like so, and then using the very smaller parts of those round nose pliers, you can just make yourself a teeny tiny charm out of scraps of wire. And again, the same process applies, make sure there's no gaps between the end of the wire and the angle, and make sure that you straighten that up. And then that can be threaded onto your design as well. Just to add a little bit of a spacer. If you don't want to use all of your beads in one go, it's a great way of using up scrap wire as well. So to make the slightly longer or more elaborate drop charm, I'm just going to take a slightly longer piece of wire. This is about five inches on this occasion. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did a second ago to create a coil down at the bottom. So I'm going to rotate those pliers around like so. Starting off with a circular form making sure that it's flat and then rotating around. I'm just going to go for one and two circuits of wire. On the large central piece, I'll just pop this in for a second. I went for three circuits on this one because it's quite a long drop and then two circuits on either side. So it doesn't matter. Uh, really, the choice is absolutely yours, but I'm just letting you know that you can make it slightly more dramatic if you want to. So popping those pliers in exactly the same as we did a second ago with that scrap piece of wire and bringing the long tail of that wire away. Now you do need at this stage to make sure that that long tail of wire is nice and smooth and straight and fluid. I don't know if you can see, this is a brand new reel I've just opened today and there's some kinks in there. So whilst it's hot from smoothing it, I'm just going to very gently, and I'm not, 
I'm not noisily flattening this. I don't want to harden it. I just want to straighten it up a bit. And the reason I want that straight is because I'm going to add some beads now. And some beads prefer to go on if they've got a slightly smaller drill aperture. They will prefer to have a nice smooth ride. So I'm just going to randomly select some bead caps and beads and add them onto this part of the design. If you're going to go for a piece which is symmetrical, then you will need to take that into consideration when you're choosing to ensure that you have enough to create both parts. Now, I wonder if I'm going to completely cover up this bicone. Yeah, that seems a waste of a bicone, so I'm going to take that bicone back out and put a bigger bead in. Let's have a gander. Let's go for one of these. Almost a matte texture, but still a really beautiful peacock feel to it and then another bead cap you don't have to go for bead caps then we'll perhaps put on that uh, darker colored bicone and maybe maybe we'll go for i don't know will one of these go on i haven't tried it yet yes it will and then we'll finish off with another dark colored bicone so let's say that's my centralized drop you've got enough beads to make two of those if you wanted to up at the top I will quickly recap for you a wrapped loop if you've never seen one this is how you do a wrapped loop if you've seen it before sorry it won't take too long popping my pliers across the design so the disc I want to be able to see that on the design so that means that the bend comes at 90 degrees to the disc or the coil that we've made at the bottom I'll show you that sideways and then we're going to use some round nose pliers to wrap a loop up at the top so if you turn those round nose pliers around you get the beginnings of a circular form, pop them back in, take the tail all the way over. You've got a nice round form up at the top. Hold that round form in position, not squashing where the wires cross, and then we can bring that tail around and fill the gap between the angle of the circular shape and the top of that bead. Now you'll notice again, there is a tiny gap between the bead and the last piece of wire. And that's because I'm always conscious that whatever bead you're using, whether it be gemstone, whether it be amber, whether it be an acrylic or a glass or whatever, we're always going to be super careful. Now, I've been working with making jewellery with beads for a good 10 years, and even I will hesitate and think about how I'm going to hold my pliers to make sure that I'm keeping the beads as safe as I can keep them. If you're using bent chain nose pliers, it is always going to be safer to have the curved side closer to the bead. In that way, you don't accidentally press down and shatter anything. So you may prefer to grab a second pair of pliers if you need to. And if you are going to take your bent uh, chain nose pliers over the top, always be aware of the bead underneath that you're not in any danger of squashing it. What I'm doing here is just making sure that that last little bit of wire is nice and flat to the design so it's not going to catch on anything and also it will just look that little bit more attractive. It's not quite as important in art or decor or sunlight catchers as it is in jewellery because it's not going to be worn on the skin, it won't catch your hair and things but it does just show greater attention to detail. So that's an alternative charm design. So you've got a couple of different things to work with there. Another design I want to show you is for adding spacers without adding too many of your precious, precious beads. So let's say you've got plans for the rest of these. You really want to make some jewellery and you only want to use these for your sunlight catcher. So what we can do is make some little coiled spacers with just wire. I've got my lovely multi-step bail making pliers here and I'm going to use the number two. And that's just the second largest of the pins on my pliers. Any small, hard, round form will do. You may be able to get a mandrel, which is adequate for your desires, or you could even use your round nose pliers if you prefer. I'm just going to pinch that wire and start circling it round the chosen rod on my bail makers. And what you'll see is that I've just twitched the pliers in the position there so that as I continue to wrap the wire around the pin, let's just remove them for a second, the cut end is traveling up and off the end. And in that way, I can make my small coil of wire as long as I want to. 
So I've gone for about five or so wraps at this point, and I think that's enough. So I'm just going to take the flush side of my pliers, uh, of my cutters rather, very carefully cut only the last little bit of wire. You don't want to cut too many, or you'll end up with some quick jump rings. <laughs> and they won't be perfect. <laughs> So what I'm just checking to do, checking now is to make sure that I've got flush cuts on both ends because I don't think it was 100% neat, there we go, where I started from. So I'm just going to take a second to trim the very end section away and get that put away in the scrap pot so I don't stand on it later. And in that way you've got yourself a cheeky little space up bead to put on your art decor design. And it just fills up a little bit of space. It can also, when you're working with long drops, space them apart enough, she says sending it flying. It can add a little bit of space between those so that they hang perfectly. If they're clustered side by side, they can be a bit jaunty in their angles. We don't necessarily want them to be jaunty, we want them to hang neatly and tidily. So you can add a little bit of a spacer bead if you wish to. So that's the bits and bobs that you might want to thread onto your design. So let's just put these random pieces on for now. We're also going to add in a couple of those beautiful ceramics from the mix. What you'll see is that on our lovely 16 gauge wire, these big spacers do work really nicely. So I actually went for a sense of symmetry on my piece that I'm showing you now. This is just an example, just to show you the sorts of things that you can do. So it's horribly asymmetrical at the moment and that's making me very itchy. <laughs> so I'm going to thread on upside down so that if you have a face, make sure that the face of the charm is facing the same direction. Then I think I'll pop on one of these beautiful ceramic beads and they'll go around a nice large circular form like this. If you make a very teeny tiny variation, even large hole beads sometimes get a little bit stuck. So the next one I'm going to add in is the large long drop. And then I'll add in another one of those ceramic beads and then I'll add in that little funky charm that we made from the scrap wire and I think I'll leave it there because you can see that this will add space to your design if you need space between drops that's a way to make it if I turn this back into its final orientation and I'll just put these two side by side for a moment so you can see I absolutely festooned this design with drops with charms, with beads, with spacers. I put lots onto this one because I wanted it to be, well, really everything it could be from this gorgeous siren mix. And I did also have beads left over. And don't forget, don't forget that I cheekily borrowed a couple of the metallic shell charm drops from this mix and they're already on my necklace or my, uh, what do you call it? Collar, I want to say, maybe it's a collar. So there is more than was in the pot that I shared with you earlier, because it's already here. So you have lots to work with and you can take as much or as little time as you need to make spare spacers. In terms of you, what you can use on the 16 gauge wire, let's just have a look and see what fits. I think even the, yeah, the larger of the bead caps fit. The rhinestone encrusted wheel spacers, they fit. Obviously, these huge hole spacer beads will fit. Let's see, I wonder if those ones will. They look like they might. Yeah, this is 16 gauge wire. Love working with Jesse James beads, bead mixers. So many of the um, large hole beads. I don't know if this one will. Oh, it will, gosh, goodness, I didn't know if that one would. So you've got loads of things that you can slide onto this design before you finalise it and decide that you're indeed finished. So let me just pop this one back up into the top corner. This is what we're going to achieve next. You'll have to imagine that we've filled this design with as many charms as you want to use. So I'm going to again start off with my round nose pliers. Now I think there's just a tiny bit more than I need here. So I'm just going to cut that last inch or so away. So that took us down to about 15 inches of wire in the end. And what I will do now is start with those round nose pliers. Now, because I don't need to put a hanging loop through this end, well, you've got choices. You can either completely replicate 
the hanging section that you started with or you can go for a slightly more decorative option because it's just going to be hanging rather than being hung from. So what I've done is I've started with a circular form but instead of keeping that second circuit of wire adjacent to the first, let me just grab those bent chain nose pliers. I'm just going to close that up. What we did on the first one is we ensured that the wire that was coming away was pressed into each preceding turn. So you can see they're very tightly pressed together. On this one, I'm going to allow that to stay open. Now, because it's slightly firmer, this is 16 gauge rather than 18 gauge, you might like to use your pliers to help you. If it's starting to feel a bit tricky, you can even just put press a little bit of warmth into it. You don't always have to rub the wire to get that to go warmer. You can hold it and press it to get it a little bit warmer. So I'm going to show you that you can, with 16 gauge, with a little bit of grip strength, move the wire around as you want to. However, you may prefer to use your pliers to control that and to get that to sit exactly how you want to. Now, the joy of working with copper core wire, this is a raw copper, so it's all copper, but working with uh, a German style wire, which is copper at the core and maybe a silver color or a gold color on top, is it's beautiful to work with. Copper is a brilliant material for wire working. So you can go very, very slowly. I'm going open and close, open and close. What you'll see is that coil starts to lift upwards. So you'll need to control that. Or you may like to hold the whole thing between your pliers, like so. Just going to open that out slightly and just press into your non-dominant hand again. But instead of it being pushed directly closed, it can be a little bit more open, a little bit more of a spiral. So once I've had a bit of a look and seeing how that's sitting, what I'm looking for is a centre of balance. Now the centre of balance will be, if you've gone for a symmetrical design, it will be your centre point. And if you imagine at the top, your hanging loop is the top of your balance, the centre point of your symmetrical group of beads or charms is the lowest point, we want to take this spiral to make it the middle point of that line of balance. So you'll just need to tip the design slightly and it doesn't have to continue to spiral at the same rate. It can start quite close together and gradually open out or it can be a bit like an ammonite where it gets larger around the outside. You may even need to just make small adjustments over on the left instead. And if I lay this back down on the board, you can see we're starting to get to the point which I'm talking about. So if I grab a straight edge, what we're looking to have is a line between your hanging point, the central point of your design at the bottom and the center of your spiral. So we're almost there. So if I just take one small adjustment more and then lay that back down on the board, now, what I will say is because this is just a collection of things I've added on here, this actually won't balance because it's not symmetrical. You will need to find where the symmetry of weight is. So if there's very many lighter things on one side and heavier things on the other, then you'll need to adjust that balance point. So you will see when it hangs if you're happy and if you're not, you can continue to make small adjustments. The basic techniques of this design are entry level for wire. And I feel confident that everyone among us, even those who haven't worked with wire before, will be able to have some fun with a design like this. I mean, you could even open the spiral out a bit so it is more like a snail, more like an ammonite, whatever appeals to you. There's lots to play with. What we're going to do for the next segment is add a couple of our beautiful tails up on this shoulder. Now that will bring into question your balance again. And it is also a way to adjust the balance. So leave this as set up for now and you can always take it slightly over to the right if you need to address the balance caused by the tails. So let's draw that one back over to the side. It all sounds terribly sciencey. All it means is it looks nice when you hang it up. And even if it isn't balanced, it's still going to look lovely. So to add the tails 
onto the design i chose a slightly lighter wire i can't pick them up i smashed a, a nail at work and it's taken away my ability to pick up small things <laughs> I'm going to grab now around about 10 inches of 20 gauge wire. This is round. I'm working in raw copper. You could work in whichever wire you wanted to. German style is perfect for this job. So it's probably more wire than I need, but it's so much easier to show you if I don't have my thumbs over the very ends of the wire. You'll probably only need about six inches, but I've gone for 10 just to show you. So what I'm going to do is start by wrapping a little central section of my finer, and again, this is 20 gauge, between where I want my, I keep wanting to call them whale tails, and of course they're mermaid tails. We're working with Let's Be Mermaids in Siren today. So I'm taking the central segment of my lighter gauge wire and wrapping it centrally around the point at which I want to add those tails. Now you'll find when you're wrapping a 20 gauge wire, can you see there's gaps between it? It's a little bit more difficult to control than when we're wrapping, for instance, a 26 gauge. So I'm just going to put one side of my pliers on the upper side of that heavy frame, the other side of my pliers on the lower, and they're going to be on opposite ends of that open spiral. And if I support everything and very gently close those pliers together, you'll see that we've just neatened up that open spiral. And once you get that a bit neater, every additional wrap that you make can simply be tidied up as you go, and it all looks so much more neat. So I think I'm going to add the upper of my two tails onto the inside of the design exactly the same way as I did on the example piece so I'm going to allow these tail the first of my two tails to slide on down again apologies my fingernail has precluded me from being able to do anything <laughs> Now what you need to do when you're working with a material like Lucite is not put stress on it. So what I'm going to do is allow the tail to sit in position and then estimate where I need that bend to be. So if I put my pliers underneath and bend the wire like so, you can see that that tail sits neatly against the wire. If I tried to draw that wire up through the drill hole in the tail and then bring it sharply back over this heavy gauge wire you may damage the integrity of the bead or the charm and we don't want that to happen at all so what I'm hoping to show you by doing something that you may consider a little bit more challenging is I'm helping you or hoping that I'm helping you to avoid the pitfalls that I came to and um, I'm primarily self-taught in wire and I found a lot of this out by cracking and breaking things and I don't want you to go through that I'd rather hold your hand and guide you even if you think it's something that's a little bit more complicated than it needs to be I'm telling you for a reason <laughs> so once you've got the bend coming up through what we're going to do is very carefully support that tail, draw the rest of the wire over the top of that frame, and then add at least three coils of that 20 gauge wire around. I'm then going to completely cover the tail whilst I tighten those coils up. I'm completely covering the tail because it supports it and it stops me from slipping and damaging it or marking it with the end of my pliers. Now, I don't really want to cut that much wire off. I think it would be wasteful. So what I'm going to do is draw another couple of turns of the finer gauge. This is 20, so it's not fine gauge, but it is the finest of the wires we've worked with today. And I'm just going to continue to coil that around the design. Now, what this is doing is it's adding strength to the design. It's also adding detail. When I'm left with about three quarters of an inch, I'm just going to put a little coil on the end because why wouldn't I? We're going to learn in a moment a lovely swooshing technique that's very reminiscent of ocean waves, especially in Japanese art. And what we're going to do is add that coiling or that swooshing section in a moment, but this will blend in really nicely. So I'm just going to make that coil sit down over the uh, heavier frame wire. And we've got a slightly mobile tail, which is fine. I think that's quite good fun, actually. So you've then got the rest of this wire 
and you can add on the second tail in the same way and in fact what I'll do is I'll just recap that for you because it is important that when you're learning to work with beads that perhaps you haven't seen before you haven't come across or certainly haven't used in wire I want to preclude you having any issues with them so I'm going to drop my pliers and then I'm going to pick them back up again I'm going to pop my chain nose pliers across that finer gauge wire and I'm going to put an upwards bend and you can see that there's quite a gap between the heavier frame wire, the wire comes away and then it moves upwards. And if we grab one of those mermaid tails, we can now add that on. And once that slides down into position, I miss my fingernail. <laughs> You'll see that it sits nicely against the wire, but it's not stressed out. So I'm going to take the remainder of the tail of that wire and just wrap it around that heavy frame. I might need to just slightly edge the other one out of the way. Of course everything is fluid at this stage, nothing is tied down, so it's always going to get in the way of everything I'm trying to do. So let's draw that round again. And I think what we might do is stop there because all I'm doing really is coiling wire round and round. Again, you can tighten those coils up slightly, always protecting your beads. So let's just pop that down for a second. Let's try and get the same level of distance left on the end. So it's about three quarters of an inch, wasn't it, give or take. Let's go back to those round nose pliers. Rotate that around in exactly the same way we made the coil for the tiny charm and in the same way we made the coil that's down at the base of the large charm. Once we've got that started we can switch to those flat facing pliers, in my case the bent chain nose that basically live in my hand. I'm just going to rotate that around until it meets that heavy frame wire. Now you can flap it down away from the coil as I did up this end or you can bring it back over the coil. I think I prefer it going away from the coil. So let's just have a look at what we've made together today and discuss the differences between this and my pre-assembled wall art or sunlight catcher, if you prefer. Now what you'll see is that my springy coil over on the right-hand side is just slightly to the right of that balance line and that's because I added weight on the left hand side. So let's just hold this up for a second. So what you might notice is that's slightly lopsided so you may need to mess around with the weight distribution. So you just sort of open the spiral side out if it's too much going that way or you can add more detail on the other side to bring it back this way. You've got lots of ways in which you can adjust the balance if you feel it's something you want to do. So unfortunately I don't have any 22 gauge wire with me so I'm going to be demonstrating with 20 gauge. It's a little bit firmer but it will show you how you will be able to achieve this swooshing wave-like design. So what we want to work with is two strips of wire side by side. So as I mentioned, this is uh, 20 gauge, your ideal would be 22. These are two seven inch lengths. What I want to do is start a little bit closer to one end than the other. And I'm just going to pinch that wire really firmly, keeping those two wires side by side and in the flat as if they're between pinch plates or two panes of glass. So I can tighten that up slightly and then what I want to do is switch direction. So I'm going to just pinch with my thumb and finger on this side, draw the wire in the opposite direction. If you struggle doing that by hand, you can very carefully hold on with your pliers, draw that wire around a little by little until you get almost a figure of eight design. Once you've got that figure of eight, we need to keep going. So I'm going to do that by hand because it might be easier to show you, but you are okay to just grip that with pliers if you need to. So I'm going to take the tail all the way around. Now the wires aren't crossing over, they're like train tracks all the way, or it's like one of those very terrifying uh, intersections on the motorway or on the expressway. 
not entirely sure what it's called the interstate <laughs> where you've got little roads that go round and up and over that's what it reminds me of or spaghetti of course so we're just going to make a series of loops and they keep changing direction but the two wires are always side by side so drawing the tails around and you can see we're just looping now if those wires come slightly apart it doesn't matter there's a tiny gap just in there I'm not overly worried about it what won't look as nice is if the wires cross over and what I mean by that is this if one wire crosses over we want them to stay side by sides so that it are acting like train tracks so I'm just going to bring that around in another loop and then switch back in the opposite direction taking the tail all the way back over you do need a bit of grip strength and as I said if that's a struggle just pop those pliers in we'll do another couple of loops and then we'll call it a day I think all the way around and then one more in the opposite direction until you've got at least three quarters of an inch of a tail on either end I might do one more loop at this end actually I think I've just about got enough wire making sure that those wires don't cross over they're always side by side so we've got a nice little section of wave like motif and what we're going to do is just lay that over the top of the left hand side of our design now what you can see I'm doing is very gently putting a little bit of curvature in it so it curves round to go over the feature like so just so that it kind of matches let me bring those tails over the top there and I'm just going to lay it over the section where we added those two beautiful mermaid tails what I'm going to do now is make sure that those wires are coming away at about 90 degrees to that frame wire, the heaviest wire that we used. And I'm going to pinch very firmly as I put the swirly whirly section over the top and then bring those two tail sections all the way around. Now you need to bring them around at least once. And then what we might do is just put a small coil on the end. The wire's got quite short on this side, so I'm just going to turn a small circular form here and sit that over the surface of that heavier wire press that down that second wire could come round for a second time a little bit further up I've, all I've done is I've circled that underneath and then I'm going to do the self same thing which is to put a small coil or a small loop shape just on the end so I'm going to bring that over and around and position it over the surface of that heavier wire and then press that down like so so that it sits as neatly as possible so if we go to the other end of that section we've got those two tails of wire coming away again you just scoot your beads around the corner if they're getting on your nerves making sure that you've got a little bit of arcing shaping on the swirly whirly bit sit it over <laughs> designed to annoy <laughs> sit it all over the surface and then bring those last two wires all the way around that heavy frame wire again you've got two wires there on the end which you'll do exactly the same as you did a moment ago you could have them both going the same way or you could have one coming one way let's just make sure we're in shot we are indeed and then the other one could go back where it came from and just sit over the surface of the design the joy of the swirly whirly design is that it's not completely machined it's quite organic so they're sitting over the surface of the design now and it just almost hides how those tails are attached to the frame maybe it's a pair of mermaids just leaping into the ocean who knows if you haven't done quite enough swirly whirly you can always reshape the shape the overall form of the design just make it slightly smaller and again don't worry too much about the center of balance if it hangs nicely it hangs nicely i think i've made it sound too scientific and it really doesn't need to be so those are the two designs side by side i hope that you can see what we're trying to achieve with this one i think it's a really lovely design i particularly like the swirly whirlies and uh siren is it's such a lovely blend of beads really beautiful colors 
absolutely gorgeous. That's your sunlight catcher using Let's Be Mermaids by Jessie James Beads in Syrah. That's just such a lovely name as well. I hope that you've enjoyed that and I hope that there are some techniques in there that you will be able to use in other places. Whether you're making home decor items or jewellery, there's lots of transferable skills in wire that you can use all mixed in with your other jewellery making. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. My name is Gem for Jessie James Beads. Have a beautiful day. Bye.